Yo ho, buenos dias from Cartagena, Colombia. I'm gonna head to a cafe that uh, my buddy actually found. This guy right here, posting up. Hey buddy. What's up? Anyway, so going to do a few questions. I still actually don't know what they're gonna be. So I'm gonna make these at the coffee shop now. I think they're gonna be on graphing polynomials, but we'll see. So this cafe here, it's called Arase. Let me show you how it looks like. right a small little spot has plugs has good internet can't complain all right so i'm gonna get into making these questions we'll go through them later i'm probably gonna go for a walk so i will catch you then nice beach time yo nice little walk along the coast in boca grande that's where one of the main beaches are my buddy milos is actually out there so i'm gonna go meet him right now so it's a nice walk it's where all those high-rise buildings are down there i've actually been running along the coast every morning got a nice little routine going so basically i run to boca grande i found a gym there then i work out at the gym then i go for a swim and then i come back shower and then i head to that coffee shop and do some work for a few hours and that's usually how i like to travel especially when i'm traveling for long periods of time i'm staying in cartagena for a few weeks so i like to keep my mornings in a stable routine usually as much as possible obviously there's sometimes exceptions and then i leave the afternoons and the evenings to kind of spontaneously explore whatever comes up but anyway that's enough about me so let's get into this question we have three factor polynomials to graph now before getting into this i'm assuming before watching this video that you watched all the previous videos in this section especially the one where we went over how n behaviors for polynomials work and in case you didn't go through it i'll put the four cases up right now i'd recommend pausing the video and writing these down remember that the n behavior of a polynomial basically depends on whether depends on two things whether the degree of the polynomial is even or odd and whether the leading coefficient is positive or negative that's going to tell you which quadrants we are going to all right so moving on to the first polynomial that we have to graph now everyone has their own different method of doing these uh the method that i prefer is i first like to get the leading term of the polynomial you have to think about what the leading term would be if we were to expand this polynomial and the way you could do that you could just multiply all of the leading terms of each of the factors so notice in this case in the front there's just a positive one which we always have to include that when we're finding the leading term and then we're going to have x 2x and then x and then if you multiply all those what's that going to give you 2x to the power of three and so from here we could tell the degree of the polynomial is three and the leading coefficient is two so the degree is odd the leading coefficient is positive so we know that the end behavior it's going to go from quadrant three to quadrant one if we read from left to right and then you can get the x-intercepts by finding out when is each of the factors going to equal zero and you would get two 2.5 or 5 over 2 and negative 4. I also personally recommend getting the y-intercept as well. It's not fully necessary, but I like to do so because it just makes sure that when you're graphing, everything has to work out and it has to go through that y-intercept. And if you plug in zero for all the x values, which is always how you find a y-intercept, you would get 40 for this particular polynomial. And so plotting all the intercepts and then making sure you start at the correct ending behavior, you end up with your polynomial once you connect everything. Moving on to the second polynomial. This one looks a little bit different. First off, notice that now in front we have a term, not just a one, but a negative three X, which you have to include when you're trying to find out what's that leading term gonna be if we expand the polynomial. So the leading term would be the negative three X, times in the second factor the leading term is the 3x but notice that that whole factor has an order of two it's taken to the power of two so we have to take that 3x and then square it and then in the last factor the x plus one the leading term is just the x 
And so when we multiply all of these out, we end up with a leading term of negative 27 x to the 4. So notice in this case the degree is 4, which is an even degree, and the leading coefficient is negative, negative 27. And so we know from the end behavior chart that in this particular case, we are going to start in quadrant 3 and then end in quadrant 4. And then we could get our x-intercepts. Now the x that's by itself that is an x-intercept of zero. You could almost picture it like being a factor of x minus zero. Okay, so one of the x-intercepts is zero. The next factor, that x-intercept is gonna be negative one over three. Now, it has an order of two. And remember, when an x-intercept has an even order, it means graphically what's gonna happen is the graph is gonna bounce off that x-intercept. And then the last factor, that x-intercept is gonna be negative one. And then as far as the y-intercept, we know that because one of the x-intercepts is zero, automatically we know the y-intercept is zero as well. Basically, the graph is gonna be going through the origin. So we got our behaviors, we got our intercepts, and then if you connect everything, remember at that negative one over three, the graph is gonna bounce off it. It's gonna go through negative one, then go through zero, and we end up with our polynomial.